As a kid, I grew up on a working farm that had been in my family for many generations. My brother and I, let's just say our chores, they kind of looked a little bit different. And through that opportunity to work on different types of chores and tasks on our farm, we learned different life lessons and core principles. Some of the principles were about how to value our resources and an appreciation for nature. When I see those same values represented around me, I immediately feel a connection back to that place. My dad and grandfather built more than a dozen buildings on our property before I was born, but the smallest of these seemed to have the greatest impact on me. The old sawmill, not more than a 10-foot by 50-foot shed, was a, was a small open-air structure that helped us prepare, mill, and cut timber from our farm to be used back in our buildings. This was a daily reminder to me, going to and from school, that if we valued our resources and we took care of them, they would continue to provide for us. Fast forward to now, having lived in the city for more than 20 years, earned a bachelor's and a master's in architecture, and studying design to think about how we impact the built environment, my connection to that farm experience is that architecture in the city is never more alive than when it's woven into spaces that enhance community. I'm here to tell you about an aspirational journey with profound results that can change the way we think and live. What would happen if we embraced environmental stewardship and transformed our perspective of community-centric architecture? For the past 50 years, big businesses, they've shaped our cities with spatially isolated corporate campuses of industry and retail. These decisions have kept the landscape oriented for people outside of the city. Our buildings represent 39% of our nation's annual energy usage and greenhouse gas emissions. In order to reach 2050 emission targets, we're gonna to need to renovate 75% of our existing buildings. That's more than 54 billion square feet. A new urban model is emerging that advocates for mixed uses, density, and walkability, but not at the sacrifice of a community's values. What if we could fight climate change and keep community values at the forefront? Let's look a little deeper at a location here in Memphis, Tennessee the Cooper Street Corridor. It's a streetscape, many of you know, but it's got similar characteristics that can be found across many of our American cities. This three-mile corridor is home to a motley crew of existing buildings that have been built over the past hundred years, from law offices and yoga studios to auto body shops and daycares. At one end, Cooper Young, a neighborhood-oriented node with local shops and restaurants. At the other end, Overton Square, a thriving entertainment district, only a three-minute walk from Overton Park, where we are now. On either side of that corridor is a thriving residential neighborhood filled with craftsman-style bungalows and cottages. For this context, we really must evaluate the existing resources first and not just assume the prescriptive path that newer is always better. It should not begin with insertion. Instead, it should begin with an integration of design thinking for existing resources in established neighborhoods that can strengthen a collective identity. But fundamentally, 
we must be able to answer the question, how can our existing buildings fight climate change? So I'm here to guide you through an experiment that can recalibrate the way we think about the built environment. I'm an architect with Archimania here in Memphis, Tennessee. In 2017, Archimania purchased two buildings connected by a canopy at the midpoint of the Cooper Street corridor. Each of these buildings had a story. One was a commercial insurance building, the other a sheet metal workers union. Built in tandem in 1950, both of these buildings have been contributing to the neighborhood for more than 70 years. And now we had an opportunity to write a new chapter. Early goals for the project were to think of it as a case study and proof of concept that incremental changes to design, sustainability, and connectivity could be woven into an accessible path to create a better connected, carbon neutral, human centric district. With these two existing buildings on site, we asked ourselves, how can we think about this process and set up different approaches that might help us to learn from this and lead by it and advocate for better design? So for this, two different approaches came to the forefront. We set up a cost versus performance model that would allow us to look at conventional baseline standards and high performance design. For the site, we gave 25% of the site space back to social gathering space and took out the parking area that was in the middle. This would create a community courtyard between the two existing buildings and allow for a future apartment building. This community courtyard could then reach out to the street and engage the public and invite them back in for a shared experience. By having these two buildings on site, we asked ourselves, how can we maximize this opportunity? And what we were able to design was a 67% reduction in embodied carbon by upcycling the existing concrete and terrazzo floors, the structural steel, and the exterior masonry. Connectivity became a driving force throughout the entire process how the courtyard connected to the street, how the buildings connected to the site, and how the interior could connect to the exterior. The interior aesthetic is a highly crafted space, rigorously organized by locally sourced material and high recycled products. The exterior is thought to be a simple canvas for light, shadow, and texture throughout each day. After living in this space for the first 12 months, this is what we were able to prove. With a geothermal HVAC system in the ground and a rooftop solar PV array, the project produces 7% more energy than it consumes. In 2021, Archimania's office became the world's first existing building to be dual zero carbon and zero energy certified by the International Living Futures Institute. These net zero savings provide more than $9,000 in annual energy savings and project an initial return on investment in less than 10 years. This model defies conventional developer logic. So I want you to think about something. How can we better value our resources to be able to secure a healthier and more resilient future? There are more than 500,000 square feet across 88 buildings along the Cooper Corridor that could be similarly transformed as our project. The environmental savings projected along this carbon neutral corridor could be as great as taking 8,000 cars off the road each year or powering more than 4,000 homes. If you apply this to seven other similar corridors here in Memphis, the impact would be 17 times greater. Our proof of concept is an example and a model about how you can take an existing site that's very ordinary and make it extraordinary. It's not an exclusive model. It's an idea and an application that's accessible 
to every town and every city across middle America. Combining moderate shifts and incremental approaches can create massive impact for the future of our communities that could be limitless. Thank you.